So, you have your Mini all built and ready to paint, but what about a paint scheme? Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Uh, right time for another Back to Basics video and uh, as always this video is aimed for beginners. Now we've already built our model ready for painting uh, but first before we can paint we have to choose a paint scheme and I want to have just a basic chat about selecting your paint scheme and uh, how to proceed forward uh, with the next set of videos that we're going to do which will cover priming and paints etc. Okay, let's have a chat about paint schemes. Okay, so let's have a chat about choosing your paint scheme because in the next video we are going to cover priming your models um, and it's very important that you actually know what colour your paint scheme is going to be before you actually start priming your models. Uh, so that's why I want to have a chat about it. Now, um, you may already have decided your paint scheme, um, and if so, hopefully there still may be some useful stuff in this video for you. But if you haven't, then let's have a look at maybe how to go about choosing your paint scheme. So let's just move this model out of the way. I've got a few books to show you. So first of all, we've got the Tyranid one. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Uh, so, Colours of the High Fleet. So a very good starting point for choosing a colour for your army is to actually look at your codex because uh, very often Games Workshop will actually have their own sort of factions within the codex um, and they're generally all different colours so it's a good starting point. Potentially you may look through the codex and you may find a paint scheme that you really like. So as you can see from here you've got um, this design here with the sort of white, pinky, purpley um, and then you've got the one down the bottom here where you've got the dark red and the dark blues and blacks. Um, and that's key because um, if you're going to prime your model and you're going to paint it white, you really do not want to be priming it black. And similarly, if you're going to be painting it in all these dark colours, then you're not going to be wanting to prime your model in uh, white or grey. But we're going to talk about priming more in a minute, but you, potentially you can see straight off why it's going to be quite important to choose your, your colour scheme first. And as you flick through the codex, they will give you lots of different examples, um, and it's a really good way to get into working out what colour scheme you like. Now, potentially you may pick certain things about a particular army that you like. So for example, you may really like the purple on here, but maybe you're not so keen on the white. And uh, that's where making your own army colour schemes comes into effect. Uh, you may come up with your own ideas, then it leads on to loads of other things, things like naming your army, having a totally different army, um, and it works really well. So I'd actually recommend, unless there's a particular paint scheme that you really, really do like, to actually come up with your own paint scheme because it makes your army unique, it makes it a little bit more future-proof. So for example, if you were playing Space Marines, uh, let's say you painted your whole army blue for Ultramarines, um, and then Games Workshop changed things up, like they have recently, where they've actually put the same chapter tactics in the one codex, and now you can have your Space Marine codex, and you can play Imperial Fists, you can play White Scars, but if you painted your army in the Ultramarine blue colour, then what do you do? Do you just take the Ultramarine chapter tactics? Do you take your White Scars chapters, chapter tactics and say, well, yeah, my army's painted blue, but I'm playing White Scar um, army? Um, so you can see if you had your own paint scheme, let's say you had your own Space Marine army, let's just say for example you painted the whole army purple, and then you had your own name, they could be the, the Purple Warriors or something, um, and then you are then free to use any chapter tactics you like and have them count as any particular army, because visually no one's attuned to seeing them, so they don't know what they're supposed to be, so it's just a lot easier generally. Uh, so it sort of does make your army quite future-proof. And that brings me on to my Aldar army, because that's what I did for my Aldar army. Let me just bring in an Aldar codex. 
Okay, so in the Aldar Codex, you've got all the different craft worlds. There's the Sum Han, which is like a red. And in the old days, you used to have a whole Sum Han uh, craft world codex, which went aside the, uh, the main rulebook, uh, Aldar rulebook. And there was different codexes for different craft worlds. Now, when I first started thinking about doing Aldar many years ago, I wasn't quite sure what craft world to do. I didn't know whether I wanted Sum Han, which is basically a fast speed army with jet bikes and stuff. I didn't know whether to go to Baltan, where they use a lot of aspect warriors and they've got this green sort of paint scheme. I didn't have a clue what to do. Um, so that was why I came up with my own paint scheme. Now I really, really did like this colour scheme. Actually I'm going to bring in my old codex because to be honest with you, these new codexes here, I don't actually like these much. These like pictures, artworks, I'd rather see models. I find it a lot more inspirational to see models. For example, there. How much cooler does that look? So I really liked this paint scheme, the green and the white, but I didn't want to lock myself into the Beltan um, Eldar. So I invented my own craft world. I exchanged the green for purple, because one of my favorite colors is purple. Um, and I thought purple and white would look really cool. And then I made my own craft world, the Idik Eldar. Um, and it works really well because I can play them with the Sam Han sort of style. Um, I can play them Beltan style, any style I like, because it's my own unique craft world, which is really, really nice. Keeps it, as I said, quite future proof. So, um, yeah, obviously the Codex is a good starting point. Of course, there's many, many different publications, uh, maybe some books that you've uh, read, some stories, uh, maybe there's descriptions in those stories that really inspired you. Just have a look on the internet, other people's armies, you know, just, just have a good look around and lock down at least a main colour of what you want to paint your army with. Now, you don't have to lock down every single colour that's going to go onto the uh, models. When I first started up here, I knew I was doing white and I knew I was doing purple. That's all I knew. And then I started painting white and purple. And the other colours came afterwards, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So let's just say that's your idea. At this particular moment in time, all you really know is a main base colour. Um, let's just say, arguably, you know, your base colour is purple. So I've got this book here. Now the only reason I've got this book out is I want to show you this. Now if you Google in, uh, let me just turn it around. If you go into Google and type in uh, colour will, this is what you'll get, or you actually you'll get many, many images. This is quite a basic image of the colour will actually. Is it quite advanced? Now I'm not going to totally cover colour theory here um, because this is uh, obviously designed just for um, you know the basics basically. So uh, this colour wheel basically has your three primary colours. You've got obviously red, blue, and yellow. There's black and white. Now we all know that black and white pretty much goes with any other colour. Um, and then you find your main colour of your army, which is going to be, in this case, purple. Now, there's two things that you can do. You can go for opposite colours, uh, known as complementary colours. So that would be the t literally the colour on the opposite wheel. So in this case, it would be yellow. So this, this here tells me that yellow and purple go really well. Now let's have a look at my... Wave Serpent again. Now as you can see, my gemstones are yellow. Now I did not plan to do yellow um, gemstones. It was this wheel here that made me do yellow gemstones. And I have to say, it works really well. The yellow really does pop on that purple. Now, the other thing that you can do is use like a harmonious color. So that is the color adjacent to your main color. So in this instance, with your purple, your harmonious colours are blue and red. So when I had to introduce a third colour onto my Aldar, uh, in particular for the hollow fields, I decided to go for a harmonious colour right next to the purple, and I chose blue. So once again, just bring in my model here, and you can see the little hollow fields are blue. And again, that's a nice harmonious colour. It's not too distracting from the main purple and yellow, but it's got a nice colour which sort of uh, almost matches in, let's say, it's harmonious to the purple. And you can see how the build-up of colours there works very, very well. 
And as I said, I didn't just go out and choose those colours willy-nilly. I used the colour chart to do that. Um, so it's a good starting point. If you really don't know what colours to use, um, then go to the colour wheel. You know, pick your primary colour. I and mean, let's just say, okay, I'm going to go for orange. I want orange space marines. Pick your primary colour. Then you could think, well, okay, I need a nice complementary colour just to help make them pop. Maybe I'll do the trims on the shoulder pads a colour. Have a look on here. You could go up here and say, right, okay, I'm going to do the trims of them blue. And then maybe the, the gun barrels, you know, you might think, well, I'm going to have red gun barrels. Um, it gives you a very good idea. And the other way to use this wheel is in thirds. So rather than going in total opposites, if you want to bring three colours in, uh, you could actually just go in thirds. So I could have potentially used purple, orange and green. They're sort of in this thirds section of the wheel. And those, those colours there will go, to, go together well. They complement each other quite well. You won't get the contrast of the purple and yellow, um, but you will get like a nice harmonious colour scheme. So those are just things just to bear in mind really when you're choosing your paint scheme. Now obviously the army is yours, so you can paint your army however you like. You can use any colours you like, you know, that it's your army, so it's your choice. But um, using this wheel, as I said, you really help uh, make your army sort of um, go together smoothly and be pleasing to the eye. Now, there are a few other things that you do need to take into consideration. Uh, let's just go back to this codex here, the Tyranids. So you need to take into consideration choosing colours that you're going to be able to paint um, or a paint scheme that's going to be, you're going to be able to paint. Now I say that because uh, people have different ideas for building up their army. Uh, so some people will have say a tournament list that they just need to get painted as soon as possible, you know they want it painted in one month, two months and there's other people a bit like myself where you know, I collect my army over years and years and years and um, I'm quite happy, you know, painting them as I go along and gradually building up the army. So I'm in no rush, so I can take as long as I like on my models. Um, so you have to take that into consideration because if you choose an army, uh, sorry, a paint scheme, which is very difficult to paint, you're not going to be able to, be able to paint that very quickly. Um, and you have to look at the models within your army or potential models within your army that you're going to have to paint at some point. So for example in Tyranids here, yes you've got these fantastic, beautiful, rather large creatures uh, which will be fantastic to paint really nicely, but then you've got lots of little tiny bugs. Um, so not only just work out the colour scheme, but also work out maybe, well okay, I know exactly how I'm going to paint my big creatures, um, but when it comes to those small ones, maybe try and design a more simpler paint scheme for them. Um, so, you know, something which is gonna match in to the army, but it's just a little bit easier to paint. So if you're painting 100 gaunts, you are not gonna want to be doing one of these paint schemes that you would have done on here. You want it to be much simpler, unless you're in no rush and you're happy to put that time and effort in. But it's just something to consider. Um, you know, when you choose your paint scheme, is the colours that you're choosing and where you're going to have to put that paint and how you're going to paint them. I mean, you may decide, okay, I'm just going to prime all of my models white and then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to hit them with a wash. I'm going to give them a red wash so I'll have this like whitey red finish and then I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to um, paint the carapace. You know, that keeps it simple. Um, and you could say, well, I'll do that on all the small bugs, but the big bugs I'll actually put a little bit more effort in. I'll do some layering and highlights and stuff. So it's just something to bear in mind, really, especially if you're painting lots of little uh, models. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I really hope it was useful. Of course, watch out for the next one where we're going to cover priming. And until then, Thanks for watching.